Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Furman Football Weekly with Clay Hendricks. The Paladins are back home on Saturday for Family Weekend, opening SOCOM play with Sanford, and of course coming off of a 34-24 loss at number 12 William & Mary this past Saturday in the final non-conference game of the season. We'll give you all the broadcast info at the end of the press conference, but as usual, we will let Clay Hendricks open with a statement and then let Scott Keeler ask question number one. Thank you, Dan. Uh, appreciate you being here. Certainly very disappointed in the outcome of the game Saturday night in Virginia. Uh, give give William Mary a bunch of credit to the offensively for what they did. Good players, quarterback, heck of a player, had a heck of a night. You know, I, I told our team Friday night, come down, I, th I thought two things, who could run the ball and turn up the margin. You know, and, 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 you know, obviously they did a great job running it. We didn't run it, certainly, as well as we need to. Uh, and then we lost the turnover battle. You know, red zone offense and chances to get points, we didn't get points. Uh, you know, couldn't get off the field on defense. You know, a few times didn't stay on the field on offense. That many more opportunities. I think probably for them, it's their ability to, to continue plays after contact. You know, we, it was a crazy amount of yardage. Uh, there were 200 yards they gained after after initial contact against our defense. So, uh, you know, but there we sat. You know, fourth quarter, right at the end of the game, getting chances, chances to win the game, get stops, didn't, didn't make enough plays to do it. Uh, you know, I, I think the frustrating thing for me right now is just uh, uh, again the details. You know, you can sit here and say well, we, we got some of the young guys we got playing. Some of that's expected, uh, but also tell them you know we, we're, we're out of spoon feed days. You know, we played four games now. We've been practicing for two months. Young guy, old guy, whoever there it is, we we got to get that fixed. And that's on us as a coach, as coaches. Me, my job. We're doing some good stuff. You know, we're going to continue to try to build on that. We're going to try to fix the things we can fix, which I think a lot of it is fixable. Uh, you know, I think uh, I see old Nick Saban saying maybe we got to get some, uh, you know, just getting the right guys on the bus, and the wrong guys off the bus. And I think uh, I think we got the right guys on the bus. I think on the field maybe we, we got to decide who are who the right guys are on the field, and we got to just do some, some snaps and reps on the field. Tried to do that. Uh, our defense is a little tough. And we had, I think, over 80 snaps on defense the other night. And, and that was both offense and defense's problem. We marched down on the field on offense, and we didn't, uh, we didn't get them off the field on defense. So. Uh, and then, you know, we turned around and got, got Sanford coming in here this week. And uh, great to be back in conference. We're 0 0. Uh, I will say this I told them yesterday, I think the last one of three teams here we had uh, won a conference championship. The team the year before that was one and three and won two, two playoff games. So uh, I like this team. I like our players. I think we have some talent, but we've got to do some things better than we're doing them if we want to, you know, we want the end result that we're looking for. So, uh, but with that, we'll take any questions you have. Coach, our uh, opposing defense is kind of a stack of the boxes against you at all, and is that why some of the big pass plays have happened? And also, uh, some of the struggles on the run have continued to happen. Yeah, I'm sure that's got something to do with it. You know, I, I'd say this. I, I'll, I'll say this. I thought our offensive line played the best game they played. You know, probably collectively as a group. I thought it was protected well. Uh, you know, there's only five of them. You know, the last you know, the last play of the game, you know, the, which was meaningless play, but totally on the quarterback. Uh, you know, and, you know, when you got take certain drops, you gotta take certain drops. You know, it's it's get details with the position. Uh, yeah, I think we've certainly proven that we can be a little explosive uh, with some chunk plays, you know, continue to get better in the run game. You know, it's simple sometimes, Scott, you know, we got a lot of reads involved in the run game. You know, when you read the guy and he takes the dive, you need to pull the ball and keep it. You know, when he takes the dive and you hand it off, He's an unblocked hat, uh, and he's probably going to make the play more times than not. And again, I think that's just the, that, that, that's the thing that sums it up for us in some areas, just attention to detail. Yeah, we'll continue to 
work hard at that aspect of it. You know, maybe got to find who those couple guys are that we went to the game. You know, maybe we help those guys get more rhythm. Uh, I, mean, I thought we ran the ball, you know, Adam P. was successful, you know, hurt ourselves with a couple of penalties. Um, but I, you know, I think it, it's kind of all of the above. Uh, you know, we'll keep working on it. Coach, um, Wilson was probably the first maybe dual threat quarterback you had and heard you face. And he, it seemed like, you know, they tried to throw it a little bit early and then when they figured out they weren't having success because I think the secondary play had its best game. Just talk about you go, going forward, facing, you're going to face a number of teams that have a similar type guy at quarterback. What adjustments will you make to that? Yeah, I, I don't think he's your average dual threat guy either. Um, Man, man, but, uh, you know, I had seen him do a bunch of that tape. I thought I thought I saw him kind of take it to a different level. They seemed to use it a little bit more in that regard. Obviously, other than maybe the first play of the game, he didn't make many mistakes. Um, you know, and it, it's like having young guys that want to run past him up, pressure the quarterback, run past him, you just turn it into quarterback draw. You know, less and less guys in the game. Like the two long runs should never happen. Should never happen. Uh, you know, I could think of so much of us not doing what we're supposed to do. Uh, he was going to get his yards. Uh, no, we'll, con we'll continue to see that. I thought we did have our, our better games in the secondary. Um, you know, we continued to get you know, some penalties. And I, I disagree with both of those calls. Uh, but I thought we did certainly do a better job back there. Uh, we busted the coverage at the end of the game. We gave them that. We had, you know, Coach May, we got exactly what we want to call. We don't communicate it. We turn the guy loose to Kind of in the, essentially coming in the game. Um, now we'll continue to see that. The kid this week, you know, he's probably not your, he's not Michael Hires. You know, he, he, he's a little, you know, a little different because he, he certainly is an athlete. They've won a one playoff game with him a couple years ago. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm sure they're going to watch that tape. Like, you know, we got to run it a little bit more. Uh, I think up front, it's getting off blocks, just the deep blocks. And, uh, we just we've got a bunch of guys who weren't as productive as they need. Uh, we got we got to get more out of that, and, and again credit for being They did a really good job of getting hats on hats, but they really old veteran group on offense. You know, they kind of big boy us, and uh, you know we we'll let them do that. And that's what happens to you. In the season today, you got manhandled by one team, which was for every reason. You manhandled one team, which you should have. And then you'd probably like to have two of those losses back if you could play them again. But of course, you can look at this as sort of exhibition season then, because what's important is that everything's ready to go Saturday and from here on out. What have you seen that, that makes you think you got a good shot to be ready after going through this? Well, I, I think even, I think probably with section of our run defense, the other night we were better. Now we hadn't seen anybody who tested us like that either. Um, I think they're really outstanding. Um, you know, I you know they were getting better. You know, Trey's getting better. Man, he does a lot of good things, and man, you know he does a lot of freshman things. You know, and you know, he touches the ball on every play. You know, and you know the old tight end that's doing that. You, you don't you don't notice it. You know, you don't notice it in these other positions. We got a bunch of them. I, uh, I think I told y'all, I think we carried 64 kids, 65 to that game, and 31 of them were either true freshmen or red true freshmen. Uh, uh, you know, and so it, again, it's a little bit of where we are, but we got some old guys, you know, not, not doing some things we're supposed to be doing. But, you know, we've shown the ability to be, be explosive. Uh, I think, you know, getting better up front. Again, that group's not played very much together. You know, and I think we've played really solid defense. And, uh, you know, we have tried to get the right guys in there. I think there's been enough good to make you feel good about, you know, kind of. Hey, you should, I, I look around and I look at some people in our league. There's some people that are, that are down on people in our league. Well, I think if you played your skates, you probably a lot of people have a similar record, you know. And I'd like you to find, you know, the difference in those two games is two turnovers. Seven. 
and so for those two games, you know, and uh, for that, take advantage of the opportunity. <coughs> That's, again, there's a lot, of, a lot of good stuff to see. And we got some talent. We got kids that care. They care. They practiced good yesterday. Uh, but they just got to figure out, you know, they we got to do a little things right. We got to continue to improve. We got to quit hurting ourselves. Coach, you referenced a moment ago about a couple of calls you didn't like. It happens in every game. We've seen it this year. I was just kind of curious about what, what are those conversations like sometimes when, when, uh, on the sideline? I would have to all the other night. I, I just, uh, you know, I don't believe in South Bank Cruz. It's recently I have eight in Cruz. Obviously, it's one of their, one of their officials. So, yeah, I, you know, as like I said, it, it works both ways. And calls are going to get this. I, I really dislike calls that were made that don't happen. That's where I'm running out from. You know, we've had two opens this year. Both were on touchdown plays. Both were inside the five-yard line. Neither one showed up on the tape. You know, and uh, we get a illegal block blow the waist. And the first drive of the game, we overcame it because Brock made the catch. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. You know, and, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I got to be careful too about getting too caught up in that. You know that. And I always tell the guys, let me handle that. You know, and I don't know what's going to change. I think people are trying to do it. But it's just, I, I don't know. I'm, you know, it's like we, we've had a lot of, you know, I've never been around a team that has any trouble since this team has gotten. Um, I, you know, like I said, I thought we just rolled those two deep balls really good. You know, there's no calls, there's no call gifts. So, you know, you just keep working. You know, I think you make your own luck. You know, right now, you know, two of those things are not quite going, going our way. And, uh, you know, we we get, a, we get an offensive pass interference because we make such a bad blow on a screen that nobody touches it. And there's just all little details. The ball goes down the field. And we're downfield blocking because of that. Even if we throw it incomplete and we touched it, it wouldn't have been a 15-yard punt. If we back it up, we make a 22-yard punt to start the second half. And they score a touchdown. There's a big difference in the game, you know. So and that's just kind of where we are, you know, right now. That kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, we got we got we got to fix some of that stuff, you know. We, uh, yeah, you know, I, you know, we get a fourth and less than yard. We get a procedure which we did, you know, and end up having to kick field. Well, we didn't kick field, we missed it. You know, we we missed. Uh, the same drive, the second down, you know, we run a boot, he's wide open, you know, just lob it over there to him, take the lead, you know, and, and, and we don't. We, I, think, I think he completes that 10 out of 10 every time. And, and, and again, that's just kind of, kind of really all. It just kind of all ties in. We're just not good enough to make some of the mistakes we're making. Uh, but I don't, I don't, certainly don't agree with all of them. So, <laughs> and then, you know, games like this, you have absolutely no recourse, none. I'm not sure you have a whole lot of recourse if it's a home, a home conference crew, but you just have you have no recourse. So there's pressure to use. I don't think that does a lot of good. So I'm kind of just quit expressing my views. <laughs> in the in the midst of the frustration, though, there's optimism, right? Because if that's the number twelve team in the country, if they're one of the best teams in the country, and I think legitimately you can say they are, then, then it would appear that you're not that far off. I agree. I agree on, on a given week, and I think the key is can you do it week in and week out? So everybody get ready to go play a week from here and there, but you know, I look around the league, I think it's as wide open as it can get. You know, it's just, I do know this, we've been tested. You know, we've been tested. That's played this really is the third game ever. He's getting better. You know, and I think you cut on the tape and say, man, the guy's he's talented. And now he cares. He you know, he he's coachable. He's he's taking all that in. We've got good, good players around him. So yeah. Now I think for me that's it's just a just frustrating things we got. We just need to continue to grow up. And uh, and again, he's uh, that's our job as coaches point out to them. You know, I told them I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm, I, I think I'm a pretty positive guy and I'll stay positive. They need to give me something, you know, I'll be positive, I need to be positive. We got, we got the whole guys accountable. Uh, and that's the coaches too. Uh, and I, our guys will respond. 
the right way. I don't, mean to, I don't mean to harp on the efficiency, I just had a kind of follow up question on what time is that. Do guys at this level, because I know it happens with pros, um, have, is there a reputation? Is one of the coaches point out, hey, you got to watch that guy. He's, nah, I don't really know. I mean, I got a, co I got a message from another conference coach this morning asking me about what I thought about something, but I don't know. You know, it's just, it's just like I said, it's. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do think this. I, I, you know, I, I have faith in our, our league and how they their process. You know, but you know, I felt the same way the first week. You know, at that level. You know, and uh, you know, and it, again, it's just it's just a little different. I don't know. It's it's. Um, I feel like some you, you get focused on that. So I don't think there's so much too much about it. You know, control again, what you can control because you may get some. It's a good bad touch, you know, we score a touchdown with the board and two guys down the field we should, we should come back. So it, I guess it balances out to some degree. But you know, obviously you close games. Um, you know, style styles of play and it has a it has an effect. You know. But like I said, the, the, the you know, I don't know the, on the one yard line would be a, you know, the only one I think the only one called in the game. You know, and uh, I think they must have had Rushing attempts or 65 rushing attempts, you know. So, um, but no, we do about it. Now, the, the question I was going to ask is uh, obviously, uh, you had receivers step up the other day as needed, um, but obviously, a big part of the piece missing Josh Harris. You know, so we're going to get updated on something snacks. No update. Yeah, you know, just like I said, we got standards we live by here and go by. And, um, you know, nothing, nothing will change this week. Devin Hester, you know, same thing happens on the other drive. You know, we, we, we bust one. We you know, got busted, busted assignment out there. Probably a walk-in touchdown. But, uh, but again, that's just a little bit of where we are. We just need to make those plays when we get those opportunities. But uh, I think that's a really good core of guys. You know, Colt Mims making a lot of plays for us. Uh, John Holbrook continues to show up. You know, ben, the, like I said, I think that is a by committee, and again, that, that's a talented group. Um, continue to find ways. We've got a guy that can get into them, do a pretty good job protecting. Uh, the tight, you know, the tight end situation is in Jackson Pryor there. It's his first play ever in college football the other night. You know, do we, you know, he's a talented guy, you know, dynamic guy. Do we, can you continue to keep, keep him involved? Um, you know, Lynn told me, I wish he'd caught the ball, you know, when, when he came across there. but. I thought Brock had, had not played his best. I thought he played pretty solid the other night. So uh, we'll just continue to build, build upon that. But I like, again, like the group we have there. Um, looking at Sanford, uh, their numbers distribution is similar to yours on offense. How have they maybe changed? I know they, they got a 12 to 7 win the last time out, which probably doesn't happen. Much around here, but yeah, you know, I, you know, Coach Coach Hatcher, man, he does an awesome job and always has. And uh, you know, I don't think he's ever going to change a whole lot. He's he always he's always tweeting. You watch him; he's tweeting what he's done with it based on his personnel. He's had some outstanding quarterbacks. Um, you know, the kid now uh, has played. You know, he came in play I guess two years ago a little more with the Pirates. He didn't seem to play as much last year. You know. When they had maybe some opportunities to play. Uh, really good athlete, throw, still throws it well. I think he's completing, you know, I think he's up in the 60s percent completion rate. I think you can see there's a little change. You probably don't ask him to make some throws, and maybe they do. But they have enough guys. I think they will probably try to use them in the running game. I'm sure after watching our games, I haven't even, they'll, they'll continue to do that. You know, they're, they're, their run game never changes a whole lot. You know, they're not overly complicated. They're just pretty good at what they do. They've had some good backs there. You know, I think one of the things that's kind of different for them is I think they got 40 some transfers on the team. You know, they went to that two years ago, and they just kind of sold into that. And, you know, and obviously a lot of those guys were playing for them. Um, and then your new defensive coordinator, uh, who was at Tennessee Tech last year, we played in the first game. 
know it, so they're kind of, they're really vulnerable defensively and added a bunch of transfers over there as well. So, uh, no, but uh, other than that, they, same, same, same Sanford team, you know, they're playing hard. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they've always been kind of dynamic offensively, you know, they played, played Florida. I think the West Georgia game probably new opponent, you know, the fact is the guy came, I think the OC came from Ole Miss. And, you know, I, I don't put a lot in the first games. Um, and then, you know, the Alabama State games, you know, what's, what's, going, what's going to game. But, uh, now they look, they, they're kind of, they look like Sanger to me. It is a characteristic, characteristic of the young that you spend so much time trying not to mess up that you can't do anything right. It's, I think that most football teams have to go through a transition from playing not to lose and playing to win. And building that level of assurance is probably right where you are right now. Yeah, I, I think the thing that just stands out to me is just the mistakes. You know, and, and yeah, I mean, it's part of the game. But just the number of mistakes we make you know, just kill us, you know. And some of them are pretty simple things, you know. Uh, and again, some of them I could make, you know, I truly could be it, yeah, you know, guys, uh, you know, but, uh, but it's just amazing, you know, uh, you know, how a quarterback's footwork can affect the whole play, you know, and, and it, it's not going to be very old, you know, or, uh, you know, one offensive lineman or, or a receiver, you know, cutting the route short. Uh, or not to mention busting the side, but uh, you know, missed tackles, you know, just, just, uh, just, just not playing, not, not using technique or at all. Uh, you know, and, and again, it's, it's just right now we just have way too many of those. Uh, you know, way too many. I, I look at the, the, the turnovers, you know, the other night. Uh, you know, poor throw. Should have still probably been called uh, on the tip of the half. The deep ball, you know, we really had two guys to block a guy. And it's really, I don't think it was really his fault. Uh, and you know, I think Colton had beaten the guy again. Uh, and then the one in the game should have never happened, you know. So uh, <coughs> you kind of have those, you know, the, the deep ball we hit. Uh, Colton's the exact same, the exact same play, you know, at, at, at Charleston Southern. When they didn't even cover him as good, and we missed him, you know. And, and, and again, that's just kind of kind of where it is. But but again, I, I, I look at that stuff, it, it you know, I, we can fix that. You know, how quickly we get fixed is going to be the determining factor. We can, we can fix that. Pretty glad the uh, long trips are over and uh, how difficult it is it to get back late on a, on a Sunday uh, morning. It's been a, it's been a, I don't know if the it's been a fun, you know, just uh, three or four on the road, I mean three or four at night, you know, two on the road, usually our hardest trips. Uh, yeah, you sit around and you know, people always say about, you know, I'm not, y'all you know me, I'm not a big night game fan anyways, but especially on the road, you sit you know, and some of these accommodations at the stadiums aren't quite what you'd like either. But uh, you know, you make it work. And our kids have handled it. I think, I think, our, I think they've been focused. You know, uh, on road, it just kind of is what it is. But uh, we don't want to. I don't think we have them. I think I've checked. I don't think we have another one. Maybe past about two p.m. So I'm excited about that. I always <laughs> like to play at home. Uh, but I'm excited to get in the conference schedule. You know, a little bit of a reset button. Uh, I, I, you know, people are like where where you are now. I don't want to be one and three. Uh, you know, I think we're about two plays from being three and one. Uh, you know, it, which gives me hope. Uh, you know, it, I certainly expect this play the best game this week. Uh, you know, we have people in the prep, uh, but but no, it's been a yeah. So, yeah, it's been challenging. Clay, you were talking about 
the, the depth in your receiving core. And I was just looking at the distribution. If you count the running backs, there have been 15 different guys catch balls. Two of those offensive linemen, so you throw them out. So 13 different guys catch balls. Your coaching career has not been characterized by being at places that throw the ball a lot. So am I right in saying that this kind of distribution is unusual in a certain extent in your experience? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, like you're, you're right. I mean, you, you probably most of the history have always been a, I think, I think you could sum us up and put your rushing football team. I wish we were a lot better rushing football team right now. Uh, but I also think, you know, in many years we let our, I think we led the league, people I remember, we led the league in passing a few times. Uh, I think a little bit of skill set where we are, I think it's a little bit of what people are giving you. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, certainly our, our quarterback has the ability to, to stretch. I mean, he's, he's proven that. And points. I'm sure our deep, deep people who play have to take so to take note of that. And we do have a bunch of those kinds of guys. Um, you know, and I think we'll continue to try to be balanced. The balance is not 50 50. And, you know, you can go beat your head against the wall and, and try to. Again, I think that's going to help us down the road as we go. But, um, but no, that, that's a good group. I don't think we're in a situation where we feel like we have to. Yeah, you know, we've been around here. We had really a, a, a dynamic guy more than occasion. We've had a couple of those guys. I think we've never had the number of guys that we've been able to do now. So hopefully we can continue to build upon that. I just want to uh, ask you about coaches and staffs and the jobs they do. And like, I think a lot of people think, you know, people, fans are disappointed, obviously, obviously they are disappointed. But I think a lot of people might uh, might think out there that, you know, it's a night game, you just get back on the plane and feel like you go to bed, whatever. People don't realize how your staff is immediately on their computers, on the bus, on the plane, looking at game film, because you have that technology to do that now, right? Can you just kind of explain how it's not over when games are, especially after a tough loss. I mean, you're right back to work. No, it's not. And I mean, you obviously you want to, you know, you try to. There have been many a nights you go home, and even if it was here, I, I rarely watch it at home after the after the game. There have been a few times I've sat in there and watched it. Um, no, it's just just kind of part of it. Um, I know we got off the bus at 8:30 a.m. after Ole Miss. And just, we just came right into the office and just stayed up and worked till you know, get after work that day. Um, yeah, I mean it's a it's a seven day a week job. You know, from from August to December. Um, you know, I think we try to balance it as best we can. And you know, like I said, I've always labeled my own consider myself a, a grinder. There's lots of ways to, to do things. Uh, I think our guys have a good balance of that, but they also they got a good work ethic. You know, it is important to them. And, uh, you know, I think anytime you're not successful, probably that shows up even more. Uh, but uh, no, and you know, uh, just the whole organization we have, and, you know, Price Parker put that whole trip together. And, uh, really, that aspect is one of the best you could possibly hope for. But no, that's the, that's the world we're in. And, uh, I tell people, you know, the ball we play with is not round either. So, uh, you know, you just kind of, you, you kind of, you know, take the good with the bad and, and, and the good parts of the job with the bad, the bad parts of the job. Or the, the, there are certain parts that are more challenging than others. Uh, but yeah, we get a chance to go play again this week. I suppose most every coach would talk about taking what the other team gives you. But of course, every all that is reshaped week to week. Do you think it's fair to say, and I think so from your background, that all of us being equal, it's a lot easier. It's easier to win football games if you throw because you want to, not because you have to. Establishing the run is important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look around, and uh, I mean, you know, like I said, that, 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 that rush differential. I don't think I've been part of that very. Of a, that big of a difference, largely because you know, we've been so good against, we've been so good on defense. Uh, you know, and, and 
it's funny you look at that and you think, well, this game was maybe close. Okay, I mean, y'all saw the game. It was, you know, we had all kinds of opportunities. But, you know, we didn't have the ball very much. I think we had nine plays in the first quarter, you know, maybe 24 in the first half. Um, had 14 points, should have had a minimum of 17. Probably should have had 21. Uh, and again, it, it, it's playing top of nerd football and getting off the field with defense. And, you know, obviously, you stay on the field with offense, your defense plays less plays you know, when, when that's happening. So, uh, But again, that people nowadays, they, 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 they won't take things away from you. They, they can't. Uh, you know, we would probably, I, I'm sure if you asked Chris Ball, he'd probably tell you they probably some things we did a little different the other night. Looking back at it, we felt like that's the way it was going to go. Um, but at the end of the day, you get a position to play if you're off the field and do whatever you got to do and get it done. Um, but, you know, strong running game certainly helps you. There's no question about that. Anything else from the gallery? Final statement, Coach, final thought? No, just, uh, you know, I had a good day yesterday. Today is our off day for our guys, and uh, I think we came out pretty healthy. Uh, hope you get Raleigh Herger back this week. He hadn't played two weeks. Uh, but, uh, you know, good, good day yesterday. Excited to have a good week of prep. Be back at home. So we got eight we're home for, I guess, three of the next four weeks. I think, and uh, it's hard to believe it's almost October. Uh, but, yeah, again, I like this group, you know, and I, I, I think they, they look at you and they listen and they go work. Uh, you know, we've had some older guys do Job being leaders for us, we'll need to continue to do that. And, um, you know, I'm excited about seeing how this thing plays out. You know, and, and certainly it's going to be a huge win for us to have a chance to, you know, get to one of the conference as we get home. Well, kickoff for family weekend against Sanford to open SoCon play is at 2 p.m. Broadcast wise, you can catch it uh, on. Uh, ESPN Plus, and our radio broadcast will begin with Pepsi Countdown to kick off at 12.30 on our flagship station, The Fan Upstate, and as always, Dwight Covington would be more than happy to sell you a ticket to the game. Go to FermanPaladins.com, and we look forward to having you at the stadium. Thanks to Coach Clay Hendricks, and uh, that'll wrap up this week's Furman Football Weekly. I'm Dan Scott. God bless you so long, everybody.